Alrighty, welcome to a Vintage Cube Draft. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'm LSV and we're drafting some Vintage Cube today. The finest format in Magic, in my not so humble opinion. And I have better news. It's open. The deck is open. We have uh, determined that we're getting past a brain freeze. Well, by the uh, whims and fate of Magic Online. <laughs> so I am going to first pick brain freeze. I actually think first picking brain freeze is not a crazy thing to do. When you, if you get Brain Freeze and Underworld Breach, you just end up with a great deck. And I love that combination. Plus, I love Drafting Storm. You could take Fracture Identity. You could take Rafelos, I guess. But on it, and we're, we're going to wheel that Helm of Awakening, by the way. But honestly, I, I think Fracture Identity has gotten quite a bit worse. Just all the expensive cards have generally gotten worse. Most cards that cost four or five mana that were good in cube, let's say, three years ago or more, Fracture Identity is definitely one of those treachery, bribery, consecrated sphinx, uh, all that sort of thing. Even things like Sneak Attack and Kiki Jiki have gotten worse. Cards like Lelia, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, uh, Minsk and Boo, you know, White Plume Adventure for as long as that sticks around. I'm hoping that's not long. All those cards have made the old standbys less good, but uh, Brain Freeze. Brain Freeze has gotten a lot better thanks to Underworld Breach. And here we've got a Time Twister. Love it. Time Twister is a great card. I, I'm really high on Time Twister these days. I actually think a lot of the changes that have been made to the cube over the past, well, this certain, this last iteration especially, have really helped Storm. Uh, Dream Halls is a huge addition. The Helm of Awakening that I think is going to table, uh, also very good. You, we got Turnabout back. That was gone for a couple of seasons. So I'm liking Storm right now. Not that I didn't to begin with. Here I'm going to take Ponder. I do like Vampiric Tutor as well, and if I knew a little more about where we were going to be, I might pick Tutor, but staying mono blue is really nice. Uh, Ponder's really reliable, it's just always so good. Helps you find things. Plus, if you're really good at pondering, it's, it's like a Vampiric Tutor anyway. And Dak Faden's a great card as well. Yeah, I'm not too worried about what I'm passing here. All right, uh, same kind of goes for Preordain, just makes your deck a lot more consistent. Passing up on a Tundra. I do like me a Monastery Mentor, Dismember is a decent one, but Preordain is a nice, nice easy pick there. And <laughs> uh, the cantrips have gotten progressively worse. Actually, that's not true. This is the worst. Consider is the worst of the three. Preordain, I think, is the best in general, because if you have a shuffle effect on handy, Ponder is better than Preordain. You look at more cards. But Preordain already comes with its own shuffle effect of putting the bad cards on the bottom. So I'm going to take Consider and... We might be looking at a mono blue here. I also like this archetype a lot. You need to get high tide to go nicely with this. Candelabra of Tanos, another new addition. All right. Yeah, we're taking Candelabra here. I think that one's nice. So your goal with Candelabra really is to just get high tide. This in some versions, you can combine it with Telerian Academy, and that's another way to generate lots of mana off Candelabra. I love this start. This start it makes me very excited. We've got a, a bunch of great cantrips, a draw seven. Brain Freeze, which is a kill condition in mono blue and not as important as it is in the Breach deck. But of course, if we see an Underworld Breach, we'll be snapping that one off too, won't we? So, pretty exciting start here. I think these decks actually tend to play out really nicely. They're fast. You can play Mana Leak, Remand, Miscalculation. Oh, I, as much as I like Turnabout, I think I'm going to have to take Echo of Eons. Echo of Eons I've, got, I've been really impressed with. And let's see, one, two, three. Seven. It is possible we could get a last pick turnabout, though I think time of need is slightly more likely. But I've got to take Echo. You can consider it into the graveyard. It's great with Lion's Eye Diamond. It's great with Dream Halls. It's just a very, very strong card. Here, this is the first kind of miss, but I mean, it's pick eight. Not a big deal. I'm probably going to take the Skydiver. I don't mind Retrofitter Foundry in some versions. And if you ended up with Telerian Academy, Candelabra, Urza's uh, Saga, Retrofitter would be pretty good. Hmm, that is actually a little convincing. On the other hand, taking Skydiver does cut blue more. We haven't really passed any good blue cards. Eh, but I don't think Skydiver is a huge signal. Let's just take the Foundry. Maybe we'll end up there. Probably not playing any of these, but I think Demir's Signet is the most likely, more so than Solemn Simulacrum. Helm of Awakening didn't wheel. That's a, that is a shame. I'll take Scrubland. Uh, there's no real reason to hate draft Athalia. It's not, uh, that's not a big concern. Ooh, Sensei's Divining Top. Now, now I'm actually kind of set up for Telerian Academy. Monastery Mentor is also kind of nice. I think I like Mentor over Othu Druids here. It's going to be one of these two. And there's a Scrubland. I guess I'm a little more likely to want Mentor. Now I'll just take whatever. Not playing any of these cards. 
Okay, could we get a last pick turnabout? I don't think it's going to happen, especially if someone else took our helm. But uh, well, we'll see. You never know. I would surprise to get a last pick botanical sanctum, but okay. All right, so what are we looking for here? High Tide is a big one. Dream Halls, Underworld Breach, those are all great. Of course, power would be welcome if we can spike a Mox or a Black Lotus or Ancestral or Time Walk. Certainly would be no complaints. I'm looking at Urza Saga and Telerian Academy both being really good here. All right, Mox Pearl, that'll do it. Oh, it works nicely with Mentor. I guess I'm glad I took that over Counterspell. Dig is another card I've gone up on because of uh, Dream Halls specifically, but... We'll take our Mox Pearl here, and we will like it. I'm not unhappy about that. We've actually got a pretty nice artifact set up here, so if we can if we can get a Telerian Academy fifth pick or something, that's not unreasonable. Most decks at the table aren't close to wanting Telerian Academy, so the card has dropped a lot, I think, in most people's estimations as, uh, well, it takes a very specific deck to, to make that card good. What do we got here? Um, there's a Force of Will, a Lotus Petal, Underground Sea... Thassa's Oracle. Don't mind the, like trying to wheel Oracle. It's not a big concern. I think I'm going to take Force of Will. When you're like the Mono Blue Storm deck, Force of Will is kind of like a time walk. Like you get to force their critical thing. It can back up, uh, you know, your Time Twister or Echo or whatever big spell you have. I do like Lotus Petal, and I don't think Lotus Petal is likely to wheel. But ooh, look at that. There's a Time Spiral. Great sign getting past a Time Spiral. Even third pick, Time Spiral is still just amazing. And Passing up on a Mox Diamond, which I wouldn't mind, but we're we're looking good for Mono Blue Storm here. Uh, the biggest thing I, I'm missing now that I've got Time Spiral is High Tide. I already wanted it because of Candelabra and the fact that it's just good in Mono Blue, but now that we've got the Time Spiral, High Tide is, I think, our number one pick. Would I take Breach over High Tide in this deck? That's a really good question. I might take High Tide. I have three draw sevens already, so I have so many ways to draw cards. So really what you're looking for is mana, and High Tide is your best bet to getting a ton of mana. Well, didn't have the option. Here, not much. I guess I'll take Metamorph, and I probably won't even start it. Sometimes you can also play Eternal Witness, but I don't think... Well, maybe... No, Metamorph Candelabra can be a combo. All right, if I end up in the... Telerian Academy deck. I'll do that. All right, nice frantic search pickup. I, I'm, it's looking like I'm the only one at the table who really wants the high tide, so as long as it's opened, I have a pretty good shot at getting it. Passing up on Treachery, but that's because uh, frantic search is amazing. Also, a nice little combo with Echo Vions. Here, there's Mana Flare, but that one often wheels, and even if it doesn't, I don't like splashing if I can avoid it. And Brawl is quite good. Brawl can also really help uh, make things cheaper. And all these blue cards here. So let's just take Brawl. And so we get to see two new packs here. All right, well, we're going to have all the Brainstorms, all the all the fetch, uh, the, the, the cantrips here. We've got Prudent and Consider Ponder and now Brainstorm. That's, I think, better than taking an off-color card. So this is looking like a great start to Mono Blue Storm. I mean, we, we're almost missing just High Tide at this point. And here I'll take Revoker. Academy would also be a potential way to, to start generating a lot of mana. Urza would be pretty nice. Um, Sahili is another one that I really like. This is the new, or not new, the new addition, but not an old card. One and two blue-red hybrid mana Sahili that makes a 1-1 one -one construct whenever you play a non-creature spell. Sahili can really pop off, and I, I'm really hoping to do some of that as well. Also, you can cap copy your Candelabra if you've got like an Academy going. That can be pretty sweet. In terms of win conditions, we already have the Brain Freeze, and Mentor is a fine backup win condition, especially off of Mox Pearl. The only untap effect we're missing is we're, we we know we're not getting Turnabout, but we have Frantic Search and Time Spiral and Candelabra, so we have more than enough. I would take High Tide over a Mox, I think, right now. It would be it would be brutal, but yeah, you know, what are you going to do? Counterspell Wield, and so did Dig Through Time? Well, I'm going to take Counterspell, because that's one of the cards that makes it so you don't lose to a faster deck. You just have up Counterspell, and then... Because this deck doesn't win on turn three, though I, I did actually win on turn three with this deck, you know, against Cedric the other day. I had uh, turn three, uh, High Tide, Frantic Search, Turnabout, Time Spiral into, into a bunch of stuff. But uh, generally, this deck wins closer to turn four or five. But having one Counterspell is often enough to keep it uh, from being a problem. All right, we'll take the Thassa's Oracle. Won't necessarily start it. If you end up short on cards, it's fine too. I could take Inkwell in case I end up wanting to backdoor a Tinker. Not that tinkering for Inkwell is even that exciting, but uh, this pack was boring before, still is. 
Oh, Sea Chrome Coast. I don't know if I'm actually even going to want it. Okay, the Mana Flare did wheel too. Mana Flare is like a really, really bad high tide, but we'll see where we end up, right? I mean, well, we don't know. We don't know what we're going to have access to, and if I don't have a way to make my lands generate more than one mana, it's going to be hard for this deck to generate the mana needed to win, because that's all it's got is untapping effects. So, Mana Flare is a possibility. So I'm glad I picked it up, because that saves us from disaster, even if it's not the optimal card. Like, High Tide is the actual optimal card. Not that I turned down a Black Lotus, of course. I don't have any red fixing, but... That's okay. Oh, there's a Time Walk. There's also a Mana Crypt, but Time Walk is amazing because it's an extra land drop for your deck that's just trying to get as many lands into play as possible. This speeds up your win very easily. And when you're uh, going Time Walk, Time Twister, Time Spell, you can end up stacking so many turns. So easy Time Walk. Fantastic open. We might wheel City of Traders. That's a card people, I think, underrate a little bit still, and I, I really like City of Traders. So on our hit list, High Tide number one, Flutterin Academy maybe number two, if we get an Academy early enough in the pack that we can draft towards it, that'd be nice. Because right now we're set up for it, but I'm not going out of my way to take artifacts unless it's kind of free. I'm looking at that Revoker and Metamorph in the sideboard, maybe. But if I get an Academy early enough, then that'll be a fine place to go as well. Though, not complaining about opening High Tide. Not in the slightest. In terms of mana, if we, were to, if we don't get any fixing, Mana Flare is a little harder to play, but that's okay. All right, so we have Spellseeker, which can get Time Walk and Brain Freeze. That's a fantastic card. Also High Tide once we get there. And there's Cryptic Command. So it's between those two. My guess is we're going to want Spellseeker more. Just Spellseeker, once you have Time Walk, is really good. It's a win condition with Brain Freeze. It's a cantrip, and it's a counterspell. Yeah, it, it, it does enough. There's also a small but meaningful chance Cryptic might wield. If Counterspell wield, Cryptic Command actually has a decent chance. It's not a splashable card. Someone, No one might be heavy blue enough that they want a triple blue card. It is, it is definitely a possibility. Whoa, a third pick Mox Ruby? Okay, uh, don't look of gift mocks in the mouth. Don't mind. Ledger Shredder and Chain of Vapor are also interesting additions here. Plus there's a white plume in the back. That card's also busted, but all right. I guess I'll take, I mean, now we have Pearl Ruby Time Walk. This deck has some power, but I would trade a lot for a, tie, for a high tide right now. Uh, we have five packs left, but Ruby helps with, uh, oh, there's the high tide. Never mind. Ruby, you know, we don't need you to help with Mana Flare. We're, we're done with that. High Tide that is, and this deck has started... Oh, Demir Signet's out of here, too. This deck has started to get particularly grotesque. All right, so let's take the High Tide. Nothing of note to wheel, really, but we basically have a deck right now. I think I'll play Mentor off Seacrum Coast, Plains, and Pearl or something like that, and then just play the rest of my lands as uh, Islands. I don't think I want Retrofitter Foundry or... Since he's dividing top, though, those don't actually do much for me. So I guess we need a couple more playables. But, and, you know, we still have four four fresh packs to go. And a possibility of wheeling some cards, too. So, oh, Narset to go with all our uh, draw sevens. And we have two Moxes to maybe turn two of the Narset. Yeah, yeah, all right. We'll keep on keeping on. This is going to be one of the better mono blue decks I've drafted. We opened well and got passed well. Not... Not much better you can do. This deck's going to be good enough. I'll probably play the Thassa's Oracle. Because what you can do with Thassa's Oracle, of course, is brain freeze yourself, cast Thassa's Oracle, and win. It's not really necessary, because if you have that brain freeze, you can often brain freeze your opponent. But uh, when this deck's good enough, why lose to them having a random Eldrazi in their deck, you know? Oh, the other card I would really like to see is Dream Halls. We have three packs left. Undoubtedly, if, we, if the card gets opened, it'll get passed to us. I think that's... Not too controversial. Oh, all these cantrips also mean that uh, this deck's going to go pretty fast. Uh, all right, so we've got Palancron for infinite mana with high tide if you have six islands in play. Or just Vendillion Click. And I think I'll just take Vendillion Click. One, two, three, four. So there's going to be two cards left after the table takes everything. Palancron might be one of them. Worldly Tutor might be another. But V-Click, I think is going to be good enough for this deck. It's a, it's another form of disruption. So this leaves us with Counterspell and Vendillion Click as our two pieces of disruption. Oh, there's a Breach. Hold on. There's a Breach and a Paradoxical Outcome. <sighs> breach is tricky because with High Tide, you want as many islands as possible. I have no blue-red lands. 
Breach is a really powerful card. On the other hand, there's also Paradoxical Outcome with those three artifacts. Plus, maybe I could just put in Sensei's top instead. Um, I feel like I'm not that... I'm just going to take the Breach. I, I don't think I'm that likely to play Paradoxical Outcome, and I think Breach could still be still be quite strong here. That's an interesting pack. All right, so this is our last new pack. So we know we're not getting Dream Halls or Lion's Eye Diamond. Shame, but okay. Treasure Cruise doesn't look very good here, so I think I'd rather take Consecrated Sphinx. The other option is actually to take Balance, because this deck's going to have no creatures, and it's just a, it's just a two-mana Wrath. I mean, I've got Brawl and Spellseeker and Thassa's Oracle, but that's not a big deal. Yeah, actually, I think I will take Balance. There's some matchups where Balance could be really good. Trinket Mage getting Candelabra Pearl Ruby. That's probably better than City of Traders, especially since I don't think... Weird that Mind Twist is still there, too. I, I still want as many uh, islands as possible. The Cryptic did wheel. Fantastic. Sahili wheeled as well. Okay, I think I think Sahili's actually going to be really good here. Uh, I'll take the Electromancer, though I don't really plan on playing it. Uh, these are all nonsense. So I think I actually might not play the white cards because I don't really need a win condition all that much. And, oh, I didn't wheel uh, whatever it is that I was thinking about wheeling there. I I don't, yeah, I don't know about hmm, this Underworld Breach. Let's take a look at what this deck would look like without Breach. This is 24. But that's also basically with 18 lands, because 16 islands and two, and two moxes. If I wanted to play Breach, because I do have Frantic Search as well. Frantic Search Breach digs pretty deep. Brain Freeze myself. Play some moxes out of the graveyard. Yeah. I could get away with maybe two mountains, and then I would play like something like 14 islands. But I'd have to cut a card at that point. On the other hand... I could also probably cut Thassa's Oracle, because look, if they have an Eldrazi and I'm doing the like, you know, brain freeze for a bunch, play my whole deck thing, I've got Sahili Time Walk, and that's enough of a win condition. You just make a bunch of tokens and then Time Walk. I think the Breach is worth running. Barely, but I think it's worth running. Oh yeah, Paradoxical Outcome didn't come back. That was one, but that ended up being fine. And Trinket Mage, yeah, I think getting red mana or a Candelabra both seems good enough to me and I think playing eight ba effectively 18 lands is fine there's no card I really want I could play mana flare as a backup in case I don't draw the high tide but I've got so many cantrips and I have spell seeker I feel like I don't need to do that okay so let's let's see so 14 and 2 that's kind of what I was thinking because I'm not going to need Breach till fairly late. I honestly could see 15 and 1, but I think 14 and 2 is probably fine. I mean, it's a cost when you draw a mountain and you wanted an island in play because you have high tide, but I, th I think this deck is just, is quite good. This has to be among the... near the top of the of the mono blue storm decks I've drafted. Really, the only thing this deck is missing... If it had a Lion's Eye Diamond, this deck would be unbeatable because then I'd have the whole Breach combo in addition to all this. Dream Halls would also be pretty nice, but just wait till we go Sahili, make a bunch of tokens, copy Candelabra. I mean, that's that's just going to be great. Uh, yeah, I'll keep this hand. So in general, with Moxes in your opening hand, I don't play them the turn you're going to use them until you know what your opponent's playing. Because yes, you could get dis have them discard it, but if they Inquisition me, they're not going to take the Mox, probably. They're going to take Counterspell, most likely. Uh, and there's a lot of like Thieving Skydiver, Dak Faden, Reclamation Sage, Loran. There's a lot more reasons to keep Moxes that you don't need in hand as opposed to on the board. But it depends who you're playing against. Ooh, this could be one of our hard matchups. Oh, that was actually a punishment for not playing the Mox, funnily enough. Yeah, I'm going to put this one on top. That's fine. And then we're just going to cast some Moxes here. We're not going to have a Counterspell up for turn two. Maybe they're going to get us with Thalia, but... This sets us up really nicely for uh, for stuff interesting. I might just give them a card here. Yeah. 
and then now I play all my moxes, and I, now I'm gonna go Narset and minus pick up a Force of Will. Okay. Well, if I need to force, I need to force. Also, I've got three lands off the top. I'm probably just gonna hope that I draw a draw seven next turn. I was hoping to find a draw seven with the Narset. They are gonna get to attack it now, but uh, that's okay. And then hope their play isn't very good. Usher of the Fallen. I think that's okay. Because I'm already conceding that Narset's going down here. So, Because I'm just going to use it on my turn. Unless I draw a Time Twister here. That would be nice. Alright, let's just do this. Let's pick up the High Tide. Play a land and pass. And then now my game plan is I can take a couple hits here. I'm at 20. This does 3. Not a big deal. I'm going to Counterspell and pay the 1 for Esper Sentinel. Whatever they play this turn. Assuming they play one card per turn. And then next turn, probably Force of Will pay the one for Esper Sentinel. And then by then, I'll have maybe drawn enough cards to have High Tide, Frantic Surge, cast a draw seven, go from there. Okay, yeah, we're counterspelling here. They probably wanted to play that before attacking, but I mean, I guess it doesn't matter because it got countered. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a Time Twister. Uh... Let's just go now, then. I don't really think there's a huge reason to wait. Let's go high tide. They can draw their card. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Because now I can frantic search and discard the force of will. Uh, let's discard force of will brain freeze. Untap three land. Oh, this is going to be nice. Look at this. We get to go Sahili. I think I'll leave the ruby untapped for now. And then play time twister with... Get a token. We've got High Tide going. There's Echo of Eons. So I could cast Echo of Eons, but it would tap me out. I don't think I want to do that. Trinket Mage gets Candelabra, which let's go. So I can go Trinket Mage, play Candelabra, untap one island, make a token into Candelabra. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. Let's do this. Candelabra. Here's where having like one more mana floating would have been pretty nice, but that's okay. Play this. Untap a land. And then now, so target artifact you control. Comes a copy of another target artifact. So let's make another candelabra. And then candelabra for two. And then now what I could do is I could cast a Narset. Or I could just leave up Counterspell, and I feel like leaving up Counterspell seems like it's going to be a lot better. So now we just pass. We didn't win that turn, but look at our board position. They don't have any attacks. We've got a Sahili and a Candelabra out. We don't have High Tide going anymore, so this isn't like a Mega Mana Engine next turn. But if they only have one spell this turn, then we're going to be in great shape. If they have two spells, uh, I don't care about that. That's fine. I mean, we could, have, we could have countered it, but that would, first of all, draw them a card off Esper Sentinel. Second of all, I don't really care what, about them having a selfless spirit in play. They can attack one of my Planeswalkers for two. And draw. They're going to upkeep, try to kill Sahelia. Yeah, that I will counterspell. And I think I pay the mana. It's just no reason to let them have an extra card because I'm not, I'm not doing anything this turn. All right, let's go Brainstorm. Put back these two. Land. And I don't have a counter spell up right now. I could minus two Sahili to get a counter up by uh, copying, copying a Mox using Candelabra to untap an island. <laughs> but I don't think I need to do that. Let's just cast Narset. And then I'm just going to just gonna minus Narset. Oh, four lands. Okay. Well, four lands that we didn't draw. So now they're, they have a turn to do something here, but what can they do? They can attack one of my Planeswalkers down to one. They could maybe burn one of my Planeswalkers down. Next turn, I'm going to get to maybe cast Consider. Or if they don't actually put something on the board that pressures me through all these tokens, I could just sit back on Cryptic and continue spinning wheels like they... Sahili actually does a really good job of locking up the ground. Loren, okay, that's going to kill my Candelabra. 
not a big deal. I have a, I have a lot more where that came from. In, in that, if I cast a draw seven, I'll have a lot of mana. And they probably had to hit Narset here, since it, Nar, Narset's minus two is way more dangerous at the moment. They have four cards in hand. I might just cast Echo while Narset's around, to because that way they, they don't get to draw off Narset off the Echo of Eons. Let's see what we draw for our turn here. Underworld Breach, interesting. Does that do much for me? I feel like it does not. Uh, so the question is now, do I cast Consider before casting Echo of Eons? Well, I have five, six, seven, eight mana. So if I Echo, I'll have two left. Three if you count Sahili, because I can turn a Servo into a Mox. Uh, I think it's probably worth casting Consider. I also get a token out of the deal. I'm not paying for that. That also actually, it's funny, the Esper Sentinel makes it so they don't draw anything off the draw seven. Time walk, well, I guess I'm really glad I did that, aren't I? <laughs> Let's go time walk. And now I think what we do is we actually do a mini breach. This is part of the reason I like breach in this deck, is I'm going to go breach uh, and then cast time walk, exiling... Let's see, consider, counterspell, brainstorm. And so now I have an extra turn lined up. I don't even need to, to use it again. Oh, I could even start attacking. I, I wasn't really thinking about it, but honestly, I, I think I'm just gonna be able to win by attacking. I have an extra turn lined up. I could just tap all their creatures, attack them for 11, and then do it again next turn, because I have an extra turn. <laughs> sure, why not? Mm, here I will pay though. No reason to, no reason to give them any any extra cards. Sahili, Sublime Artificer, really pulling her weight here and hitting for eleven. Ooh, they're gonna containment priest and block one of the tokens or the trinket mage. I guess it does the. Doesn't matter much either way. Spell seeker for, I guess, high tide. Not that it matters because we just attack them now. Because we stacked up extra turns. They block trinket mage, they take 10 down to zero. I could even do an additional one by making one of my moxes into a servo, but I don't really need to do that, do I? All right. So, playing against Boros Aggro is one of the tougher matchups because they have a faster clock generally, and they have cards like Esper Sentinel and Loran and Thalia. Thalia is the only one you really, really care about. But I don't think that makes me. I should probably side in balance. I should probably take out Breach, take out the two mountains, because Mentor is also good against them. All right, so we're going to put in Seachrome Coast. Put in two planes. Here I might actually want to put in three planes because the it's a lot more important to cast these things when you on time. So let's put in mentor and balance. And then now we need to cut one now, even though it's all fantastic. I don't really want to cut Baral. Look like they had a lot of creatures that Baral blocks pretty effectively. I don't think cutting a cantrip sounds great. Could cut a Trinket Mage, because I have a lot of three drops now. Yeah, that seems fine. The ideal balance play is, is when you have like Mox, Candelabra, Planeswalker, you just dump all those, and then you just cast Balance. Though, funnily enough, Sahili is not really a combo with Balance, since you'll make a token when you cast the Balance, and that's not ideal. So, we'll see what ends up happening here. But uh, they're going to bring in... Any artifact removal that they haven't already played main deck, if they have something like an Eidolon of the Great Revel, which they may not have played because it was double red, you know, that kind of stuff. So you do have to watch out for that. We have a balance to get rid of creature-based hate pieces, have Cryptic Command, Force of Will, and Counterspell. Like, part of the reason this deck is actually really good, or part of the reason it is so good, because I think obviously very good, is 
having access to force of will and counterspell and cryptic means it's even got a decent amount of uh, interaction. It's not just gold fishing here. I wonder if I'm at one too many. Still have 12 islands. That's a lot of islands. I, I don't know that I need to play. I was deciding between the, basically, do I want the 13th island and just go down to two planes? I really just want to draw one of my white sources per game. But with Monastery Mentor, you kind of want to have it in your opening hand. So you can play like a turn two or turn three mentor and start making tokens. All right. Uh, all right, I guess I'll keep this. It's not a great hand, but I think this is all right. And I can force a will pitch and brain freeze, by the way. It's not the end of the world. They play a turn one Esper Sentinel. I probably would counter it. Mox Ruby, huh? Okay, that's not... Not a terrible draw. It's better than drawing a random land. Like, it's better than drawing an island. I'm probably going to have to force this. Selfless Spirit. No, I don't have to force that. Selfless Spirit is not a fast enough clock by itself. And I can probably counter the next couple couple rounds of things. All right. Time Spiral is great because now we have something to build towards. Now we're looking for High Tide. We're looking for maybe another Mox, that sort of thing. I mean, mostly High Tide. Spell Seeker would also work. Okay, take two. Oh, they have no no creature, no land. Okay. <laughs> Echo Vian is less good of a draw because I'm not that likely to be able to use it here. But I'll take a little more damage off this Selfless Spirit. And because of Sahili, Mentor, and Time Walk, I, I don't feel particularly worried about pitching Brain Freeze if it comes down to it. As per Sentinel, I will counterspell that. Now I'm going to play my mocks this turn. Because I've got a... Oh. Now we're actually going to do something. We are going to play the mocks this turn. <laughs> uh, and Mentor is a great sideboard here. If they have a... They didn't have a burn spell either to kill it. But Mentor is going to outrace them pretty nicely. I'm going to force of will whatever their next play is. I might actually force of will pitching Echo of Eons. Oh, they didn't play anything else. Think about even brain freezing, but I guess they're doing so badly right now that there's just no real reason to to do anything. Let's just pass. I don't even want to click them because their hands all spells. Like I'm not gonna take a spell and try to draw them into a land. I'm likely gonna play Vendillion Click this turn, but I even I even kinda want the selfless spirit to attack. Uh Let's, uh, let's just click in response here. I'm probably not going to take anything, but I would like to uh, like to see what they've got. Whew. Their hand is 3-drop, three 3-drop, three 4-drop, four 4-drop, four 5-drop, five 5-drop. Five so I'm not going to take anything, and I'm actually going to force of will pitching a card to counter the Mox Pearl, which is not a, not, I wouldn't say a typical play. <laughs> I'm going to pitch Echo Vions because I think I'm just going to Brain Freeze this turn just to get another Monk token. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, I mean, Vendillion Click was good there. The, the, the hand's a little chunky, I would say. Oh, getting the beatdowns on. Okay. Yeah, they don't have any Burn in hand or anything. Let's just Brain Freeze you... For just, I guess we're brain freezing them for like twelve randomly. It doesn't. It doesn't really matter. It's probably going to get time spiraled anyway. I don't have echo in my deck anymore. Otherwise, I might target myself. If we draw a land, I'm just going to cast this time spiral. But I mean, if we draw a time walk, that'd be pretty nice too. But uh, uh, or time twister. Yeah, that that also that also plays. I think. So it just pumps the monks, and there's a pretty good chance I'll be able to string together enough spells here. Let me auto yield to these so it doesn't. Uh... All right, whoop. Pearl balance not looking ideal here. I mean, this is actually kind of a bad hand, but I don't think it'll matter because they don't appear to have a removal spell. So I think I'm going to high tide for literally no effect except pumping my team. 
But pump my team, it does. If they kill the Monastery Mentor, they take 18 still. If they Helix the Vendillion click, oh, did they F6 and then realize that uh, I gave them a new hand of cards? No, they were still dead. All right, and that's how you do it against what you know could have been one of the harder matchups. Didn't see their whole deck, but uh, I like how Blue White Storm does the trick. Alrighty, time for round two here, and oh, here we are. <laughs> All right, well, we've got a turn one Sahili here, because remember the Ruby can help pay for it. Value, and uh, with Force of Will backup. Okay, okay. Just need a, or a time twister away from going pretty far. Turn one Ponder, sure. So yeah, I'm going to play the turn one Sahili. Uh, I'm giving up a token by not, by not having a Mox in hand, but... I think that's totally okay. Mm. Kind of ridiculous start, actually, if you think about it. Boom, boom, boom. And then now, drawing the Brawl wasn't bad, actually, because I can force pitching Brawl and then leave up Counterspell. Against turn one Island Ponder, probably don't have to force on turn two. Well, don't even have the option, but uh, we'll see. I'm not going to play the Brawl here. Just gonna go land go because now I can cast counterspell. And if I can end up in a spot where I go hard cast counterspell, then next turn hard cast force of will also works. And we're we're lacking a draw seven. This is true. And we drew a mountain, which really not a huge deal, but could be bad if. Uh, oh no, no, we're not. We're out. I'm out for that. Uh, for them snap pondering here. But if we draw uh, cryptic command, it's gonna be kind of annoying that we drew the mountain here. Well, there's the island. All right. Start getting that clock on. <laughs> then just pass with hard cast force up. And now we're like Echo Vions, Time Twister, Time Spiral, all fantastic draws. Cantrip's really good because they just start generating tokens and we find cards. So all we need to do is draw one of our, you know, 15 cards that say draw a card on it. <laughs> okay, so they've got something here. So we look like we're playing in some kind of... Teamer, good stuff sort of deal. Eternal Witness. No, I don't really want that either. They keep trying to ponder, and I keep stopping them. Okay, let's draw. And here's the draw seven. No, not a draw seven, but I think clicking them is going to be good. I don't care that they see this is my last card. Kind of on the uh, just getting the beats on with our uh, Sahilis and Brawls and clicks here. Okay. They have five cards in hand. What do they got? Time Twister and all garbage. And Lion's Eye Diamond. Wow, okay, their deck looks a little different than I thought. Mutavolt Swamp? What in the world? I would have to see more of their deck, but I'm going to go ahead and guess that it's not right to have a Mutavolt and a Swamp in... Whatever this deck is. The Swamp, totally fine. They have Verdant, they have a Black card, whatever. Mutavolt? That's confusing. I like how I took their Time Twister, and uh, <laughs> then I cast my own. But look, there's a difference between doing it on your turn and doing it on their turn. And now we're going to Time Spiral here. Floating a blue on tap our lands. And now let's start with a... Brainstorm, I think. Yeah, because I think I'm going to want to leave up Cryptic ultimately. But if I can brainstorm into a, an island, I could play another cantrip. Okay. The mountain's punishing me a bit here, but I think we're still doing completely fine. Let's put Trinket Mage back. I guess I'm not casting Brain Freeze that soon. So let's go Brain Freeze, Trinket Mage. Play a land. Send and then just leave up counter spells. I'll put a stop in my upkeep. There's a chance I want to consider a card off the top of my deck, though it's not even that likely. And now I have Cryptic plus Force of Will up, and I just have a one turn clock. So Healy just put a huge clock into play. This is three, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Do I want to counter that? Let's see. No, I don't think I do. Because if they Trinket Mage, I have three, six. I just need to cast two spells to. To have lethal. No, just one spell actually. Black Lotus. Oh, look at you. Lion's Eye and Black Lotus. Okay. Narset. Sure. 
Narset in general is a card I don't like seeing, but I'm not too worried about it right here. Narset into Brick, into Thassa's Oracle. Counter target spell, bounce trinket mage. And now I have lethal because I can turn a mox into a servo. Uh, sure, I'll draw. No, no reason to upkeep. Oh, it can become a creature, but that doesn't actually help too much because, or uh, one, I could turn it into a Brawl or a V click, but obviously with them being legends, that's not great. All right, playing against the mirror. I don't think that makes me want Thassa's Oracle all that much or Retrofit or Foundry. Yeah, I guess I kind of like where I'm at. I already have three counter spells in my main deck. Having Force of Will in this matchup is huge because on the if if they're doing the the sort of thing where like they're time twistering, I'm time twistering. The fact that I have a free counter spell in my deck is pretty amazing. <laughs> Ooh, this hand's nice. This hand just on its face is turn one land mox time walk turn two time twister. Just let's let's restart when I have three things in play. They mulliganed and hopefully don't have a any art any cheap artifacts. Okay, land. Time walk. And, I mean, the fact that this deck has a bunch of power certainly does not hurt it. Land. Just time twister. I don't really see a reason to wait. And if they force a negation it or something, uh, so be it. Okay, so what did we draw into? A pretty solid hand. I mean, the Underworld Breach isn't doing great right now. Oh, Sheldock's nice in this matchup. We both tear through our decks pretty fast. But I get to have Brawl plus Counterspell next turn. And that lets me discard the Echo of Eons. So that's pretty cool. So what I might end up doing, we'll see We'll see how things pan out. Spellseeker Time Walk is a nice play to keep on the lookout for. And once again, go the like, Time Walk into... Uh, draw seven sort of deal. Narset's nice too. Let's ponder. I would like to find an island. I have low low hopes here. Okay, I'm not getting greedy. Land. Uh, actually, let's just let's just attack and pass. And then next turn maybe. I might be able to set up a, a Narset Echo turn if, if uh, my opponent taps out here. Thoughts circle, sure. We're not that close to Shell Dot going off, so this doesn't bother me. I still don't understand the mutable in my opponent's deck. What's up with that? <laughs> and I draw Sahili here. My next card is a mountain. I could play a spell seeker. I mean, this actually seems kind of nice. Look, I'm just gonna go spell seeker. Get time walk. Cast time walk. I kind of hope they have a counter spell here, because then I could, uh, then I could just counter it right there. But they didn't. Draw. There's a brain freeze. Don't really need that. Let's get Narset into play. And I don't really. Uh, no, let's Narset because if I find Force of Will off Narset, I'll be pretty happy. Oh, would you look at that? And then obviously not attacking. And now we've got, we've kind of got the whole thing all set up. Like if they don't cast spells, then I'll probably just play a Sahili next turn. If they do cast a spell, I can counter spell it, discard Echo of Eons to Baral's ability. Metamorph. I don't really even care that much about it, but I think just casting Counterspell is really good. Discard Echo Vions. And now their, their doom is set. I guess I'd have to pitch Sahili to Force of Will at this point if I, needed, if I wanted to do that. Oh, they had a mountain. Okay. Drawing a blue card wouldn't be bad. It rarely is. Oh, there's a time spiral. Uh, 
Yeah, I guess I would still rather cast Time Spiral rather than... No. I was supposed to float mana, but I guess that's not the way Magic Online works. It's okay. I think I think well I think my opponent is gonna be demoralized here. I was gonna go time twister, time walk. Like they're just it was done. We were gonna draw a million cards, take a million turns, like it wasn't gonna be close. And all right, a little two oh four oh. Let's see if we could uh, fire off one more. Oh, is that is that a constructed resources very own Andy Gray in third? Very nice, very nice. All right. This hand is okay. We have us uh Consider and if I find a mox, I'll have a turn two Sahili or Vendillion click, probably Sahili. Force of Will pitching one of these three cards. One of the expensive cards, that is. We'll see what we're playing against. I hope I don't have to use Force of Will on turn one, but you never know. Okay. Black Cleave Cliffs Mana Crypt. I'm just gonna force a will the mana crypt. I guess I should consider first. No reason not to. Island. Put that in the graveyard. Ugh, that was not a good draw. All right. Well, let's pitch cryptic command then. I guess I'm just gonna pitch my most expensive card. I feel like putting island in the bin was okay because I could draw a mox or something. Oh, wow! I just got. I just got ransacked. Eh, no real reason to play that. They can now they if they have another cheap artifact, they can weld their uh, mana crypt back. Brutal. Urza Saga. Okay, their deck looks cool. Boros Signet. Sure. Okay. Well, Counterspell's a little late here. I feel like I'm just gonna pass. And. I don't think I'm not going to click on them on draw step because with Urza Saga in play, it seems pretty likely they're not casting a big spell this turn. They're just going to use Urza Saga, though they can weld in the Mana Crypt if they want more mana. I was actually going to click myself. Lelia. Okay, that that one's actually acceptable because I'll just block it with Vendillion click. Hmm. And I need, I need to get this candle over out of my hand. Don't really care what's in their hand at the moment. Okay. Block. And they are going to get to Saga this turn by welding with the ye old goblin welder here. Play Baral, leave up Counterspell, but we're on a pretty fast clock. The Goblin Welder getting Mana Crypt back is a pretty good deal. So they're going to have a 2-2. Two, two. Basically, they're going to have a 4-4 four, four in a second here. What are we looking for? I guess we're looking for a draw 7 here. I mean, casting Time Twister with Baral in play is pretty good. Oh, they didn't make another token. That's kind of scary. Uh, sure, Brawl goes down, I guess. I don't think I can afford to fight over Brawl here as much as I would like to have Brawl in play. Well, them not making a second token is... If this is an artifact, it's going to be really annoying, but it probably is going to be. Oh, Brain Geyser. No, all right. Eh, after all said and done, they kind of threw away all their artifacts. Like, this... Didn't end up that good for them. <laughs> they didn't make a second Taga token, and they sacked their Lotus Petal before attacking. So so if I play Sahili, it gets attacked by the Construct, because I don't want to spew off High Tide to protect it. If I keep Sahili in hand, I get punished by drawing Time Twister or Time Spiral, but rewarded if I draw like a Cantrip mostly. Okay, they're going to get the Signet into play, just so they don't take Mana Crypt damage, but... It really could be worse. Get, look, they played Lelia, Lightning Bolt, Urza's Saga, Mana Crypt, Lotus. Like, they played a ton of great cards, and at the end of it, they have a 2-2 two, two and a 1-1 one, one and playing one card in hand. Like, I kind of feel like... I guess I, went, I, I did have Force of Will, Counterspell. I had some, my own Disruption as well, but Vendillion Click, etc. <laughs> uh, now punished. All right, now I guess I'll play Sahili. 15. No, I'm just going to wait another turn. I 
think it's okay. I'll wait one more turn, and if I draw a cheap cantrip, actually, I'm just going to play Sahili. It's fine. Sahili doesn't need a lot of loyalty to, to do some good work. This also makes them tap their Goblin Welder. I just drew Time Walk, so if I if I don't play Sahili this turn and end up... Oh my god. Okay, sure. That's tough. They drew an Ancestral Recall. Okay, if they play an Artifact here... Then I guess Sahili still doesn't die. This puts Sahili to one. Yeah, one is worse than two, but... Not not bad enough that I want to use up my uh, my high tide. I don't think they also might not be planning on attacking with Goblin Welder. We'll see what they do. Welding into Lotus Petal. Okay. Oh, they really like sacking their Lotus Petal before attacking. <laughs> Mind's Desire. Okay. Wild. We hit Candelabra. Trinket Mage? Oh, no. Okay. Well, this actually still doesn't kill Sahili. Okay. Okay. Oh, they missed on Trinket Mage. They're playing Trinket Mage for Candelabra and Lotus Petal. So, wow, they actually got pretty unlucky there. Oh, no, they got a Lotus Bloom. But that's okay. That doesn't really matter. Okay, okay. I kind of... Despite the fact that they did cast seven spells last turn... I think I'm actually going to win this game. Um, yeah. In fact, now that I've drawn Time Twister, almost, almost definitely going to win this game. I'm just using up the High Tide so I can have a time, time walk after the Time Twister. Oh, yeah. This is... It's so over. Uh, let's brainstorm. We're not going to get a High Tide this turn, but let's put these back. And then ponder, shuffle, draw. If I find high tide again, then it would be spectacular. But even if I don't, I feel like I'm in pretty good shape here. Let's, I guess we just have to start with frantic search. Because otherwise we're just going to be time spiraling. There's not, not much else we can do here. Okay, I can discard Echo of Eons Island. So we can actually do a different thing now. Land, Narset, Echo of Eons. And they'll have the, the stuff they have in play plus one card in hand. But, oh, I mean, that worked out pretty nicely, I would say. All right, they were just off it. They, they saw the Echo, they saw the Narset, they didn't want to play anymore. All right. Mm, do I want Metamorph because they're putting big artifacts into play? I, I could put Revoker in. Maybe maybe I just take out the Breach, add two islands, and then just put a Revoker in and just be mono blue. I can Revoke Goblin Welder. Can't Revoker as a Saga. They're playing some kind of Storm deck. Yeah, all right, I'll try that. I mean, the sand isn't completely terrible. Turn two, counterspell. Land, 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 land after that. Eh, I could probably do better. Keep this hand and put brain freeze on the bottom. Okay, this hand I think has a, has a little bit more juice. See what they're up to here. Turn one, Savai Triumph. All right. Play Brawl. Technically, I could Cryptic on turn two by floating a blue, frantic searching, and untapping my lands. I might need to next turn. Oh, well, I'm not going to be able to. Okay. There goes the frantic search. They have four cards in hand, but they have access to up to like five, maybe six mana next turn. Oh, okay. There's a welder. Uh, they're down to two cards in hand now. All right, they have one a one turn window to do something. 
and then cryptics up and time spirals coming shortly thereafter. So let's hope this isn't a, a big play this turn. Are they going to weld? No. Trinket mage. Okay. Don't mind that. Are they going to get the Lotus and suspend it? Play for the long game? Be happy with that too. They could also get Candelabra. Oh, they got, well, they got the Mana Crypt, of course. Oh, and they're playing it. Oh, okay. I don't know why they're playing it. Well, I'm definitely not casting Preordain when, now that I have Cryptic up. I guess they can weld in. Sure, they can weld in the Lotus Petal. Why not? They have two cards in hand? I mean, if they play a big artifact, I can't stop them because of the welder. Well, I kind of can, actually. I can, since I have exactly cryptic, I can counter it and bounce the welder, and that'll at least delay it. I mean, they know I have cryptic. Mind Slaver, yeah, so. Counter Tiger Spell Return Target Permanent to Owner's Hand. Well, hold on. I could do that. And then they replay the welder and they have it because they can just sack the pedal and play it next turn. I could also counter and bounce the Mesmeric Fiend. Then they could weld in Rakdos Signet and Mesmeric Fiend me again. I don't like that. I think I'm just going to counter and draw. Wait, why am I countering it? Maybe I just don't counter it. They don't have enough. They're completely tapped out. They can, have, they can make three mana with the welder. All right. I'm giving myself a... A bit of a challenge here, but I can't stop them from mind slavering me next turn. Nothing I can do can do that. I mean, I can counter it and bounce the welder, and then they sack pedal, replay welder, and then on the next turn they mind slaver me. What I can do is end of turn, bounce Mesmeric Fiend, draw a card, and then I know I can time spiral on my turn. I mean, I guess what I could have done is I could time spiral, I could have bounced, countered, bounced the welder, hope to draw a land to time spiral the mind slaver away. That is true, but I think this will I think this will be good. Because remember, all I have to hit is I don't even have to hit a land to, to do this. Now that I have Frantic Search, I do have a guaranteed time spiral, and I get a bunch of draws for high tide here. Also, even just drawing a land here is good because uh, it means my time spiral is going to generate more mana. Okay, so let's start Frantic Search. Uh, yeah, let's pre because if we find High Tide, it's just so much mana. Candelabra and Revoker. No, I'm just going to put these both on the bottom. So if I ponder, I can still cast Time Spiral, so I think it's worth pondering. Any order, shuffle. So, I mean, I kind of, I wasted a two mana, but if I found high tide in that two mana, then I would be kind of on easy street, so. Oh, I also have Frexian Revoker in my deck. I did see it in the in the shuffle there. Revoking a Mind Slaver is also kind of cool. Ooh, I think we're gonna, <laughs> I think our Gambit worked out. All right, let's untap those two. Let's see, how do I want to do this? I could go Sahili Time Walk and just start the next turn. I could also go Time Walk, Time Twister. I kind of like, well, no, I really want to get the Sahili into play and I'll have a lot of mana next turn. So let's go Sahili. Time Walk. Okay, no attacks. Draw. I even found the Revoker if I need it, okay. Let's start by casting, no, let's start by casting Ponder. Cause again, if I find, if I find a high tide, it's just really, really gross amounts of mana. Narset, okay, so I could cast Narset Time Twister and then I, and then they would get to, mm, they wouldn't get to, they wouldn't get to Mind Slaver me cause I could go Narset, Time Twister, but I haven't played a land yet, and I could turn a Servo into a Mox to revoke Mind Slaver. Okay, I like that. So let's go land. Mm. 
Narset. Turn this into a Mox Ruby. Revoker. Oh, I guess I, I, I need to frantic search at some point here too. Kind of. Though I don't. I guess I know my top two cards are. So the Mind Slaver. And there's just no reason not to do this. I mean, I could have Narsetted first, I guess. And, and maybe that would have been better, because if I hit High Tide, I would generate a lot of mana. And then, oh, I hit the Time Walk anyway. <laughs> this deck is absurd. <laughs> I told you, having Time Walk is just, just not even close to being fair. All right, well, if I'm getting a Time Walk, let's go ahead and Narset here. Uh, let's get the Ponder. Now now we're deep. In, now we're in Ponder's game, but... All right, and I assume I'll be able to brain freeze them out. I think fairly easily this this turn. I can spell seeker for high tide. I mean, I have a million ways to go about this, don't I? So I have used my time spiral. I have time twister in the graveyard, but echo of eons. That one's that one's still in the deck. Uh, let's start with spell seeker then, because if we get high tide, we can just we could basically draw our whole deck here. Land, high tide. Candelabra. I mean, I, I have double candelabra thanks to Sahili here. Candelabra for one, two, three, four, five, six. And then. Sahili turns Servo into Candelabra. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is this is peak magic. You can't tell me it's not. <laughs> uh, Trinket Mage doesn't really get anything. Let's start with Ponder. Ponder, let's shuffle, draw. Frantic Search? Sure. And discard two islands. So we're brain freezing them for 18 right now. Now we'll, 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 we'll do better than that. Graveyard. Because remember, I've got an Echo of Eons at some point that I can hit here. I guess I'm about to be out of uh, out of looks at stuff. Oh, never mind. There's the Echo. And let's just cast Echo of Eons. They're going to they're gonna stop us from having fun here soon, I'm afraid. But... For the time being, we're going to get to keep going. Uh, Preordain. <laughs> I mean, this is... Uh, we're now just looking for time walk here. Oh, there's a time twister. Let's go V-click. Click them just for the additional insult, but tinker on the bottom. They don't draw because of Narset. I can brain freeze them for 30. That's not quite lethal. You know what? Just to be safe, let's just cast time twister here. <laughs> All right, let's... uh. Ponder. Oh, I don't want these. Let's shuffle. Preordain. Bottom. Bottom. And I guess I'm out of I'm out of nonsense. I have I could bounce Narset and replay it, but that doesn't really do anything. So let's just go ahead and attack with those and then just pass with cryptic up here and counterspell and they have a mind slaver they can't use thanks to my Frexian revoker if they kill my revoker well I could counter it mm -hmm. oh there's the time walk <laughs> there's the the completely unnecessary time walk all right let's attack with everything Ooh, they can block my Revoker, but it wouldn't do anything. Ooh, and that's how you trophy it with Mono Blue Storm. We went there from the beginning, and we never looked back. Uh, obviously, it helped opening a bunch of pieces of power. I'm not going to claim it didn't, but I will say, we got past that Mox Ruby third pick, and I'm not questioning how that'll happen, because I will take it. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for hanging out. And, of course, if you want to support the channel, you want to support more videos, just, you know, give me a little like or subscribe here and uh, be back. Uh, I'll be posting tons of awesome cube drafts. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.